Today I'm in a small area of Newcastle called Ousburn and if you've never been here before you don't know what you're missing. It's basically nestled in between Newcastle city centre and the residential suburb of Baker. If you want to get here, if you are walking along the quayside with the River Tyne on your back, you walk past the Millennium Bridge for about seven, eight, nine minutes, you'll eventually see a bar called the Tyne Bar. That's the mouth of the River Ousburn. In recent decades, Ousburn's been going through some massive regeneration. In 2000, it was designated an area of conservation, and I love coming here, especially with my dogs. There's loads of places to eat and drink and just basically chill out. There are places for uh, artists and musicians and families and students. It's just a really buzzing, cool and funky place to be. Not that I'm suggesting I'm cool and funky, but being here, I can create the delusion for myself that I'm cool and funky. But Ousburn wasn't always a nice place to hang around. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about five things that you probably don't know about Ousburn. It's coming up. Number one, during the 17th, 18th and 19th century up until about the mid 1900s, Ousburn was the cradle of Newcastle's industrial revolution. The flowing river through this particular valley made it ideal for various industrial processes. During that period you had lead works, you had flour mills, flax mills, you had glass works and potteries, you had abattoirs and tanneries. Well, I've got no idea why they had sunbed shops back then, but the place was absolutely a hive of industrial work that was going on at the time. And immigrant workers come to the area as well to, to earn some money. Most of the people who worked here lived here as well in squalid tenements. The place was just surrounded by dangerous chemicals and substances. Kids would play in, contamin in the contaminated river. The goods that were made were taken down the Ousburn River on small barges called wherries down to the time where they were loaded onto larger boats or ships to be transported elsewhere. So while I'm here, I'm gonna talk about number two because the Ousburn Valley has three bridges that run over it. The first of those bridges is the one directly behind me. It's the Ousburn Railway Viaduct and that was built in the 1830s, de designed by John and Benjamin Green. And that was the old Newcastle and North Shields railway line. Originally had timber beams, but they were replaced when it was rebuilt in the 1860s with steel beams. So it's now the East Coast Main Line and it's a grade two listed building. The second bridge to be built in 1878 was the one that's furthest away behind me, the Baker Road Bridge Viaduct, um, and that used to have a toll on it of a half penny. And in 1899, it was widened by three metres either side to accommodate more carriages, and I believe for the use of a tram system. Although the guy who designed it, his name's actually escaped us at the moment, so sorry about that. And the last bridge to be built, which is the one sat in the middle, that's the Baker Metro Bridge, and that was opened in 1982. And that was the first structure in Britain that had cantilever sections brought in and were uh, put together with epoxy resin. That's right. The Baker Metro Bridge is held together by glue. Number three, this year marks the 1900th anniversary of the building of Hadrian's Wall, which started in AD 122. And the place where I'm stood right now is the exact spot where Hadrian's Wall cut right across the Ousburn Valley. And the story behind the building of the wall is that the Roman Emperor Hadrian, he wanted to build a fortress that marked the northern frontier of the Roman Empire. So he wanted to come to Newcastle and he did. But before he did, he went to the library in Rome and he borrowed a book called Laniacel Geordi. So when he come up to Wild's End, he spoke to the troops. He says, right lads, I want you to build a deep big wall that's 15 feet high and eight feet wide to keep out those pesky jocks. So there's plenty of our time. I want knee skiving, crack on. So they did, three legions of about 15,000 Roman soldiers from the Middle East, North Africa, Europe and Britain started the building of this wall which took six years and stretched 73 miles from Wall's End 
to Solway and Firth and Cumbria. But where I'm stood now, where the wall was, there's, you won't see any sections of the wall any, anymore. And because when the Romans left Britain in the mid 400 AD, uh, over the centuries, the wall was pillaged and the stones used for building other structures like buildings and walls. If you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified the moment I release the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Number four, it's the Ballast Hills Burial Ground, which is right next to me here. And you might be wondering how it got its name, uh, Ballast Hills. Well, the, the banks which surround Oosburn School here, uh, they are natural banks. They are made up of uh, ballast. Back in the day when ships were coming up the Tyne, they didn't sail empty. When they're coming to collect cargo, they travelled with ballast in their cargo holes to keep the ship steady, made up of rubble and clay and boulders, etc. So when they got to the Tyne, uh, that ballast would be offloaded and brought up to roundabout here and other areas of the River Tyne by horse and cart and dumped and then put into other ships and, and back and forth. And that happened for quite a while until that practice stopped and the banks of ballast were just left to grow with their trees and foliage and now just look like ordinary banks. So that's how it got its name. But the burial ground here itself, that was used for the religiously non-conformist and the very poor, those who were Quakers and Protestants and Methodists who had been working through this industrial period in Newcastle's history who died of various diseases and illnesses and plagues, uh, yet they were all buried here. And up until like the mid 1800s, there are literally thousands of dead bodies under this ground right now. And in about 1853, when there was a cholera outbreak, they discovered that burials were helping to spread cholera. So they closed all the graveyards and they removed all the, the, the gravestones from here, about 200 of them. And the gravestones are used to make the pavements around this area, except those who are conformist uh, ministers, their gravestones are up by the uh, wall of the school. So yeah, very spooky, I uh, believe, and I understand this, this area uh, legend has it that this area is now haunted, as you can imagine. Can you just thousands of dead bodies right now under this area of grass, which in the 1960s was cleared away to make a, a plain field. So the area now is commonly referred to as uh, Plaguey Fields or Granny's Park. While we're here, we'll talk about number five, and that's that building over my left shoulder there. That's the old Oosburn School, and that was built in 1893, designed by Frank Rich, and it housed about 928 children the ground floor was for the infants the middle floor was for the older children and the top floor was a, a technical area used for laundry and workshops and cookery kitchens etc uh, so the building was designed around a slight like central hall and all the classrooms had their own fireplace but it was also ventilated and heated by a, a pipe system that was uh, powered by a steam boiler and those pipes went through upcast shafts to the twin towers to escape and they were designed with a far eastern field a bit like a burmese or buddhist uh, pagodas and myth has it that they were designed like that to impress far Eastern ships that come to the area in order for them obviously to spend more money, but I can't find anything in writing to corroborate that. At the moment, we think that Frank Rich just liked designing towers that had a far Eastern feel about them. So the children at the time that went to this particular school, they didn't learn through the traditional book method. They, they were taught traditional skills and split into historically male and female things. The females learned how to cook and do needlework and housekeeping skills. The lads learned how to do joinery and other rudimentary building skills. And the school was closed in uh, 1960, when then in 1993, uh, the building was taken over and is now a business centre with offices. So perhaps you're watching and you went to this particular school or you've got a relative who's probably aged about 70 and upwards who went to the school. If you did, leave us a comment below. I'd love to hear the stories of this old school. So I hope I've whetted your appetite about Oosburn. If you haven't been here before, you have got to get along. It's a fascinating place and a great place to hang out to have food and drink. I also recommend um, the uh, historical walking tour that they hold by the Oosburn Trust every Saturday morning between 10.30 and 12. It's only £5. Get yourself along. It's excellent. I also heard yesterday that the Oosburn farm uh, was shut down because they've discovered avian flu in some of the birds, so that's a shame. So anyway, that's it for the end of this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified the next time I release a video. Don't forget to leave us any comments about historical things going going on about Oosburn but I'm also going to do a couple of more videos because there's loads more to talk about in relation to Oosburn and especially the pubs and cafes and restaurants etc so until next time catch you later